my brothers and sisters, a very quick, important message. Firstly, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you notice, we just read Salat al dhuhr with Jama'ah. And this is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One would not believe how blessed we are. It is Allah and Allah alone who gives us these opportunities to read in such peace and in such goodness and to be able to come and fulfill a duty we have unto our own maker. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. In order to show gratitude, it is not enough to just say, I thank Allah, but it is a dedication. It is something we need to promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that not only the salah shall we fulfill for you, but we will endeavor to learn all the regulations that you have sent down and adopt them as best as we can. So inshallah, if we have salah that is in place and intact, preferably like you all know for the men folk to be reading in the masjid, and that is preferred. If there is no masjid in your area and you are living somewhere where perhaps it is difficult to get there, one of the minimum things you could do is read salah with jama'ah, even if it is in your home. And obviously, you know, we are living in a country where you might not have a masjid nearby. So at least you gather your family, make something very important out of it. The reason is I have the deen in me, maybe, perhaps. You have the deen in you, maybe, perhaps. But we need to pass that torch on to the generations. If they witness that we have a keen interest in reading our salah within the home, automatically without saying one word, they will show a similar interest. There will come a time, and you and I do know that, when the generations that are coming forth will not want to be told anything. If you tell them something, perhaps they might be offended. They might not want to listen to you. They might think you are being unreasonable. So there definitely has already come a time when we need to teach by example. Example meaning you show lots of love to your child and your child witnesses that this father of mine, this mother of mine who loves me so much, this is what they do every day. Let me follow the footsteps without talking, without saying anything. They will follow the deen. They will, they will come forth. Mark my words, my brothers and sisters. There will come a time when it will virtually be impossible for us to tell our children what to do because of the way they may react to it. So if we start from now, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leading by example, we won't have to say one word. They will come forth and they will be able, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, witnessing our dedication and the goodness and the sweetness we get from it. And by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be able to follow that beautiful example. So we show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying his commands, by abstaining from his prohibitions, by controlling not only uh, our temper and so on, but developing our good character and conduct. It's not enough to say that I'm a person who fulfills salah, but when we go home, we swear, we shout, we scream, we waste our time, we sit in front of the television watching all sorts of movies, or perhaps we're on our phone all day and all night. We need to understand there are limits, and we need to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept certain duties on our shoulders that we need to fulfill. One thing that is of extreme importance that I have found very beneficial in my own life, and obviously it's derived straight from the sunnah of Rasulullah and that is to ask Allah's forgiveness genuinely every single day. Do not let a day pass without asking Allah's forgiveness. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, whatever I've done, certain things I know, certain things I don't know, certain things I did intentionally, certain things unintentionally, they were done. Ya Allah, forgive me, grant me purity, grant me goodness. Ya Allah, you know, if there are sins that we know we've committed, we engage in repentance and tawbah for those particular sins with the conditions of tawbah. And that would be to admit your sin, to regret it, to promise not to do it again, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. But if a person, for example, engages in something, they don't know. A lot of the times we do things and without even thinking. And this is wrong because sometimes the environment is such that it just happens. People happen to be doing things that are, that is not the ideal way of doing things, not the proper way of doing things. And we happen to just follow, you know, follow uh, because of environmental pressure or whatever else it is, the norm. We ask Allah to forgive us, really. Wherever we have faulted, Ya Allah, forgive us. The strength that is achieved by a mu'min through seeking the forgiveness of Allah is something so immense and intense that you look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sunnah, confirmed, you know, a hadith, when we say muttafaq alayha, there is no doubt about them, that he used to seek forgiveness between 70 and 100 times a day. 
He used to seek forgiveness of Allah. He did not need it. He was a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the one who came to us to teach us the goodness. And Alhamdulillah, we should be at least following that example as best as we can. So we ask Allah's forgiveness on a daily basis. And when we seek Allah's forgiveness, please, my brothers and sisters, do not reduce istighfar to a mere service by the mouth. It should be genuine. You should feel it in your heart. Oh Allah, forgive me. You know, after salah, the sunnah, as soon as you make the salam of the farad salah, is to say astaghfirullah thrice. That's a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu But let's not just say astaghfirullah, 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 because it's a sunnah and we don't know what we said. What are you saying? You are saying astaghfirullah, I seek your forgiveness. Oh Allah, you are my maker. Wallahi, the amount of strength we will achieve by that is so immense. It's so great. We, uh, you know, if you take a look at Surah Nuh, for example, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the benefit of istighfar by the tongue of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. He was telling his people uh, what the benefits of istighfar are. So the verses, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدَرَارًا وَيُمْدِدِكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا What beautiful benefit of istighfar. He says, I told my people, seek the forgiveness of Allah, O my people. Istaghfiru Rabbakum. He is indeed the most forgiving. Innahu kana ghaffar. I stop for a moment to tell you, my brothers and sisters, shaitan comes to us to make us think that the sin you have committed is beyond the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes you grow a little bit older, you turn to Allah and you are not proud of what you might have done in the past. So shaitan comes to you and makes you think, no, the sin I committed, no ways. Allah is not going to forgive me. I'm going to be penalized. I'm going to be punished and it's over and I don't know what's going to happen. If that is the case, we, we are driven further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let that happen. Innahu kana ghaffara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed ghaffar, not just ghafoor. You know, ghafoor is one who is forgiving. Ghaffar is one who is oft forgiving, one who is very forgiving, one who understands the nature of human because he is the maker and one who knows the condition of the heart. In fact, one in whose hands is the heart and its condition. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts to, to be uh, in his obedience and soften our hearts to be with him rather than against him. I mean, so if Nuh alayhi salam is saying, if you seek this forgiveness, obviously seek the forgiveness of Allah. He is most forgiving. Don't lose hope in his mercy. Never, no matter what you've done. Those who were kuffar have turned to Islam or they've repented and Allah's forgiven them. So definitely if you have a person who is trying, and they faltered here and there. They've committed, for example, a sin they're not proud of, and they have warm tears of regret and repentance. They need not become worried. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed most forgiving, most merciful. Be steadfast upon the path, and you will find the doors opening one after the other. What type of doors open when you engage in repentance? When you engage in tawbah or istighfar, when you ask Allah's forgiveness, do you want to know the type of doors that open? So let's continue the verses I just read now. He will send forth the rains from the sky in a way that is beneficial for you. You know, rain when it comes, it comes with destruction. And sometimes if it's too little, it comes with a drought or it can destroy the crop. Too much of it is a problem, too little of it is a problem. You need the right amount at the right place. You know, what's the point of having all the rain in the city when the farms that are in the outlying areas have no rain? And what's the point of having so much of rain when it comes to the farmland that it burns the crop? You know, the crop becomes rotten after a certain time. So if a person engages in istighfar, they ask Allah's forgiveness, they will definitely achieve the correct proportion of sustenance. They will achieve the correct proportion of rain. Rain is connected to the livelihood, the economy. You know, if you have good rain, good crop, mashallah, in, the, in a lot of the countries, you have uh, the, what they call food security and you have the blossoming and blooming of the entire economy because the rain is correct, the weather is correct, everything is, is beautiful. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, if you engage in istighfar, even your economic woes and difficulties will be made easy. So he sends you the rain. And he will, 
He will strengthen you or He reaches out to you with wealth. He will give, grant you greater provision. Amwal. Amwal is the wealth. And who doesn't want wealth? We would like wealth that is halal, that has barakah in it and blessings. To be honest, a mu'min is not concerned of having or amassing a lot of wealth. He is more concerned of having the pleasure of Allah. So to have wealth with the pleasure of Allah is nurun ala nur. But if Allah has, is pleased with you and you don't have wealth, it is still the nur, meaning it's still goodness. You know, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us sustenance. Obviously, life is expensive. We have to work very hard in order to earn and we will have to come and spend that money by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is in control? It's Allah. Some people can earn 2000 pounds perhaps a week and they don't know where it went. And other people earn 200 pounds a week and mashallah, they still have lots of change at the end of the, the, the following week. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we have this consciousness of Allah, we ask Allah's forgiveness constantly on a daily basis by the will of Allah. He will help us to economize. He will help us to spend correctly, prioritize when it comes to a charity, when it comes to a good deed and so on, where to spend, where not to spend. But if a person has no consciousness of Allah, they won't ask Allah's forgiveness correctly. What that means is, you know, you just come and say Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. But you walk out and you're committing the first sin. What is the far was that? You know, we go home and we start swearing. What is the far was that? If I say, oh Allah, forgive me, purify me, grant me goodness, make me a good person such that I can be good in this world and I can achieve goodness in the Akhirah as well. And I'm conscious of my statement all the time because I say it up to 100 times a day. Then obviously I will be a person whom when I need to spend, I think about it. Is this a good cause? Is this something that will benefit? Then I spend. And in that way, you will not spend unnecessarily. But when a person has no fear of Allah or they are just paying lip service to the istighfar, they will spend on all the haram things. You know, uh, I don't even need to make mention of bad habits and haram habits. We all know what it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says one of the benefits of it, asking Allah's forgiveness is that he will open the doors of sustenance for you. Anyone who is struggling in terms of a debt, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, finance and in a financial way, I promise you, if with conviction you ask Allah's forgiveness on a daily basis, by the will of Allah, the doors will begin to open because he owns the doors and he does not lie. Subhanallah. He does not lie. You ask Allah's forgiveness. Continue asking Allah's forgiveness. If not today, then after three or four years, perhaps he wants to keep you in a certain condition because he wants you to get closer to him. Sometimes Allah keeps us struggling. We think it's struggling, but we don't understand. It's through that struggle that we found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's through that difficulty that we came closer to Allah. So this is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah, we engage in istighfar and we will achieve a lot of goodness. Allah says, yumdikum bi amwalin wa baneen. Allah will grant you children, offspring by the will of Allah. And when we say baneen here, by the will of Allah, we're talking of those who will be the coolness of the eyes of their parents. Not just a child who perhaps you look at and you feel so stressed to say, you know what, that's my child and I don't know what they've done. Obviously, that too is a test of Allah. May Allah grant us all children who will be the coolness of our eyes. And may He make us children as well who will be the coolness of our parents' eyes. I mean, but at the same time, if you would like offspring and you would like decent offspring, one of the ways of achieving it is to ask Allah's forgiveness. Imagine the virtue of seeking forgiveness. People say, and I know some of the younger people sometimes, you know, we interact and we talk. I say, brother, you've got to ask Allah's forgiveness. He say, for what? Ha, what did I do? Did I do anything? What did I do? He say, no, hang on. Seeking forgiveness is such a great act of worship that even if you have not done anything wrong, just by mere virtue of asking Allah's forgiveness, your status is being elevated. It's being elevated. You get closer to Allah. I'm asking Allah, oh Allah, forgive me. By saying that, I'm acknowledging that He is the owner of forgiveness. To ask Allah's forgiveness is an act of worship that is huge, huge, subhanAllah. So this is why don't think for a moment, what did I do wrong? And why is it that I need to seek forgiveness? Seek the forgiveness and then you find the various benefits of it. Allah will grant you gardens, Allah will grant you rivers. This is the goodness of the dunya as well as the goodness of the akhirah. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. These are just a few words that I thought I would share with you. 
my beloved brothers and sisters, really, it is important for us to turn to Allah through uh, istighfar, asking Allah's forgiveness on a daily basis. Show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Show your thanks to Allah for giving you so much by seeking His forgiveness constantly on a daily basis. You know, if you ask Allah's forgiveness, He forgives you. Imagine if I get used to asking Allah's forgiveness 100 times a day, genuinely. It does not have to be in one sitting. It can be spread out through the entire day where maybe a few times in the morning, I, I ask Allah's forgiveness. Later in the morning, I ask Allah's forgiveness. Again, I have istighfar on my tongue. If perhaps midday, I ask Allah's forgiveness. Later on in the afternoon, one day I will die. And so will you. Imagine on that day, if we have got into the habit of asking Allah's forgiveness, one of the last deeds we would have engaged in would have been asking Allah's forgiveness. So get used to this because I guarantee you by the word of Allah, if you have goodness in your heart and you have good words on your tongue as you depart, you will not be let down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the minimum guarantee we can have. If you, are, if you have a good heart and you have good words, do you think Allah is going to just throw you aside? No, Allah will never go against his promise for me and for you. Allah does not go against his promised time and his promise uh, of any nature. If he has said something, he will deliver. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us more conscious of this. Uh, I think if we can at least start off with something great of this nature, we will be able to achieve the benefit. The last thing I wish to say is look at how small it seems and look at how big the reward is. Look at how small it seems. You know, if just the istighfar, it seems like a little small matter, but wallahi, it is a huge issue. It is something big. It is something that keeps us focused and the reward of it is massive. We ask Allah to bless us all, to grant us goodness. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta